12 o'clock here in Sweden, which means it's uh, time to start. Uh, welcome everyone to Microsoft 365 Chicago. I'm thrilled to be here. Hope you are as well. And of course, welcome to the jungle, managing your tasks in Microsoft 365. Um, I'm Adam Deltinger. I'm a senior IT consultant working at ITEA in Sweden. I'm also a Microsoft MVP since uh, about three years back as well. Uh, feel free to connect and reach out to me on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, whatever you prefer. Uh, you can also visit my blog at deltinger.com. All right, so before we're starting off here, let see so I can change my screen. There you go. Uh, before we start off, I just want to say thank you to this event sponsors uh, making this event possible. Uh, also make sure to, to visit the event, uh, the sponsor booths in the, in the event team as well. And I'll talk a little bit more uh, after my session, but there will be some, you know, raffles and stuff like that, stuff you can win um, if you do so. And also, of course, uh, if you have the possibility, please donate to the Children First Fund, helping in, you know, public schools in Chicago uh, and the surrounding communities. So it will be a great if you if you have the possibility to do so. All right. With no further ado, let's talk about tasks. So it can be a little bit confusing. There are a number of apps and services within Microsoft 365 with the with the purpose of you know working with tasks uh, or with the ability to work with tasks, I will also say. Um, so uh, you can, if you can see on my screen here uh, in a little bit more detail, we have OneNote Planner, Outlook Tasks, Microsoft List, Microsoft To Do, and then we have the Teams Tasks app. So it might be a little bit, it might look confusing, right? But I would say it's not that confusing really, um, because it's a lot of it's a it's a matter of preference, a personal preference, I would say, or it's a matter of where you are, are at the moment and so on. Because a lot of these kind of they have a very well, a very good integrations with each other. Or they interconnect in one way or the other. Uh, and if you look at the Teams task app, for example, it's not a task service by its own. It's more of a kind of a collecting your tasks from different other services. So I will, of course, I will explain this in, in a little bit more detail. I will also uh, uh, do a walkthrough with uh, some demos as well, I would say. So as you can see here, um, there are a few different services here, but they kind of all points to Microsoft Teams, right? And that's kind of the way Microsoft goes, like all road leads to Microsoft Teams, right? So uh, I will show you this, that you can use the Tasks app in Microsoft Teams to do a lot of your work regarding tasks, actually. All right. And kind of just give you an introduction to each one of these apps or services and how they kind of connect into each other. Uh, so I'll go one by one uh, really quickly here. So Outlook tasks. OK, you all kind of heard this or work with this before. Can you maybe you're actually working with it right now? There are some people that really like this, uh, this feature here. So Outlook tasks, that's something you can do from Outlook the desktop version of Outlook because um, the uh, Outlook on the web actually utilizes something called Microsoft To Do, which I will get into in a little bit. So we still have this in our desktop version of Outlook and it's like kind of, you can, you, you can work with your task. You use basically task lists and you can have tasks in these and so on. And a really great feature to have here uh, working from Outlook, this is basically the only reason I actually use Outlook tasks now and then is when I want to kind of create a task out from an email. And that's a really great, good feature. And I'll talk about that uh, as well. And I mean, it's, I mean, I would say it's rather, you know, advanced. Uh, you can do a lot of things with tasks here. You can share tasks, you can kind of um, create columns and add metadata to tasks if you want to do that. Create, uh, and you can create these different kind of categories which you can only actually do from, from Outlook tasks. And when it comes to integration, Outlook task integrates with Microsoft to do, meaning if you create a task in Outlook, that will be synchronized to Microsoft to do and vice versa. It synchronizes both ways, I would say. And not everything since Microsoft to do is kind of it's a different setup. So you can do a lot of with tasks that 
won't be really synchronized to Microsoft to do. Uh, so, but for example, here we have the priority due date, we have reminders, uh, some progress, and also categories, uh, even though I would say not used them that much because I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, so there are some synchronization going on here between Outlook tasks and Microsoft to do. And then, of course, we're moving on straight to Microsoft to do. So Microsoft to do is the, you know, your tasks app in Microsoft 365, where you kind of have your personal task. It works the same way you use task lists and in, that, in those task lists, you create tasks. OK, and it's kind of a modern way. Uh, so you can you can kind of uh, use the web app. You have a desktop app on your on your uh, in your Windows machine, for example, which is really great. And you also, of course, have a really good mobile application as well. You can download to your mobile phone. And as I already mentioned, when we talk about Outlook on the web, we don't have Outlook tasks. It's already being replaced. It has been replaced by um, Microsoft To Do. And that will probably happen soon enough also in the desktop client of Outlook as well. And it's it's very good. Uh, you create lists, as I mentioned. You can also share these lists. You can share individual tasks. You can share lists with the others. Uh, but keep in mind, though, if you have a school or work account, you can only share it with people within your organization. If you want to share kind of external and stuff like that, you get Microsoft to do as if you have a personal Microsoft account as well. So you can do that and then you can share externally to other people as well. And when we, uh, we already talked a little bit about the integration here with my uh, Outlook tasks, right? Uh, but we also had this kind of integration with the Teams tasks app as well. So we can visualize all your to do tasks in Microsoft Teams within the tasks app of Teams. OK, so moving on here, we have OneNote. Uh, and why am I talking about OneNote here? Because OneNote is not really a task management app, right? It's a it's a digital uh, notebook, right? It's for note taking. Uh, I just wanted to mention this because uh, kind of the old version of OneNote that the, that the one we call OneNote 2016 uh, that comes with Office package installation and so forth. Um, that has some features that doesn't exist in the kind of the modern OneNote. OneNote for Windows 10 is basically OneNote Online as well. Um, that has some feature that that hasn't transferred over to that that application. Of course, it's it's rather old. I mean, Microsoft even tried to remove it uh, and to just focus and push OneNote for Windows 10 and OneNote Online. But I mean, it's because of the lack of features still, people were kind of angry about that. So Microsoft basically took it back and added support for that. They won't update it with newer features. That only happens for the uh, OneNote for Windows 10 and online version. But still, there are some good things there that doesn't exist in the new one, including the ability to create a task, or I would say create an Outlook task uh, for Note. So if you go back to what I've said previously, uh, that if you can create an Outlook task from OneNote 2016, then the Outlook task synchronizes to Microsoft To Do, right? And Microsoft To Do can be visualized, those tasks can be visualized in the Tasks app in Microsoft Teams, okay? Um, go forward here and talk about Planner. Uh, and just to be kind of clear, because sometimes confusion appear when you kind of like, what? What app do I use uh, for this specific purpose, right? And I use the same analogy between Microsoft Planner and Microsoft To Do, the same way I kind of use the analogy between OneDrive and Microsoft Teams regarding files. So when when I say what the purpose of OneDrive is, your personal files, it's your files, right? You are the owner of those files. I have the ability to share these files. If I want to, if I need some help or so, but if we are several people working together, together and collaborating, I would prefer to use teams or a group for this and have these files there where we kind of have a shared ownership or not really in an, any individual ownership at all. It's kind of the group or the team that owns these files. OK, and I use kind of the same analogy here, though, with Microsoft to do. It's your personal task, even though you can share them when it comes to planner, it's our group management app, right? 
Uh, and it's a really great application. I mean, you're probably familiar with it a little bit. It's always connected to Microsoft 365 Group just as a team. And I would say I would never really use Planner by its own. It's a, ser a separate service, but it's so very well integrated into Microsoft Teams. Most people use Planner from Teams, right? Because when you create a team, there is a group behind the scenes getting created. Hence, also, you can have a plan connected to that group. So you kind of get it all in one. So you just add that planner as a tab in one of your channels in your team and you work from there, right? So regarding integrations here then, okay, it's gonna it's a little bit more complicated. It gets more and more complicated, but in the end, it's, I think it's rather easy and you kind of sh choose your approach uh, about all this. So tasks you have been assigned to in any planner plan you're a member of can be visualized in Microsoft To Do. And as well, because Microsoft To Do it can be visualized in the task team in Teams, you can also see them and visualize these planner tasks in there as well. So any planner plan, planner task you've been assigned to can be visualized in Microsoft To Do. And it's actually optional if you want to have them in To Do. Uh, it's on by default, but you can it's a setting you can actually turn off if you prefer so. All right. And uh, I just want to talk about Microsoft Lists a little bit as well, because Microsoft, same as with kind of OneNote, it's not a task management service at all, uh, but it can be used uh, for that purpose. Uh, it has a lot of other purposes, and Microsoft Lists is kind of you know kind of based on the good old SharePoint lists and now kind of 2.0, uh, which now becomes its, its own service with its own web app. It has its own mobile app and it's a really great one, uh, actually. And it's also integrates into Microsoft Teams as well. Just as with Planner, you can add uh, a list to a team as a tab and so forth, or you can just use the web app board, for example. Um, but I would say, when do you use a list versus planner then maybe of course you have microsoft list you can have any other you can do have a lot of different purposes using microsoft list but in terms of tasks i would say you can use microsoft list when planner is not really enough from that purpose because planner is rather limited it's a great app with some great functionality but if you kind of want to extend further it's rather limited to in order of customization and so forth so there have we can use microsoft list because a list is based out of columns and rows just like an excel spreadsheet and from there you can build your own columns and add kind of you know any kind of data within those kind of columns. You, and there's a really nice integration with the Power Platform as well. So you can easily integrate this with Power Automate to kind of automate um, um, actions within this list. So for example, if you kind of use, um, use special items uh, in this list, you can have a column called you know, progress and you can build how, however how many progress types as you want to and if that status changes for an item in this case it's a it's a task right um we can say that okay then power automate kicks in you know sends an email to this person uh post a message in in a team and you know make some coffee or whatever you can do a lot of things with power automate it's very powerful as well as you can create very easily create the power app based on a, on one of these lists and even as well power bi uh, can be used to visualize the, uh, this list as well very easily and you have some benefits regarding sharing as well because it's it utilizes sharepoint behind the scenes so kind of whatever organizational settings you have you can also utilize uh, the, the same for list regarding sharing so you have you can share a whole list but you can actually also share an item in this case then also a task so you can share an item internally externally based on your organizational settings of course um in terms of integration uh, with microsoft teams here uh, there's not really an integration in the tasks app, tasks app of Teams, but uh, I mean, it, again, again, I I usually work with lists a lot, but I use use you do it from a, from a Teams perspective, okay? So just as with Planner, I can add a tab, I can create a new list and add that as a tab in any of my Teams if I want to. Otherwise, from that, it's kind of disconnected to all other things like Outlook tasks, Microsoft To Do, and Planner, and so forth. Okay, I just wanted to mention this because that could be a good idea. So as you can see now as a summary here, Planner, 
that integrates with the assigned task into Microsoft To Do. The Outlook task you have integrates with Microsoft To Do as well, as well as if you use, utilize OneNote 2016, you have the possibility to create an Outlook task, which we then turn in next turn get synchronized to Microsoft To Do, right? And Microsoft To Do itself first where we are, integrates into the Microsoft Teams Tasks app. And then we have on the side kind of a little bit the Microsoft Lists app, which kind of integrates well and work well with Microsoft Teams, but not from a, the Tasks app perspective. Okay. All right, that was a lot of information and I hope you kind of follow along a little bit, but I think it will be a lot more clear when I actually kind of show you what happens and show you this in a demo. So I think it's time for a demo. So I'll actually go back here. I hope you can all still see my Outlook screen now. So I'm gonna start off from Outlook on the web. And as you can see, I'm logged in with uh, my account here. I'm in my inbox. And as you can see on the left-hand screen here, there's a little box, a little icon here, and that is Microsoft To Do, okay? If I click there, I will be taken directly to the web app of Microsoft To Do. I won't do that as of yet. But as you can see, I mean, I don't have any Outlook tasks button here. It's the Microsoft To Do, okay? If I go up here in the upper right, I can also see kind of a checkbox. So if I click that one, I can now see that it, this kind of integrates directly into Outlook on the web. It says here To Do, right? So here I can basically, I can, I can start working with this. I can add a task here. And where am I at the moment here is something called my day. So my day, I will get into it, into it in a little bit more detail in just a couple of minutes here, but my day is kind of a virtual container. It's a kind of virtual list, also called a smart list in Microsoft To Do, that kind of, where you can kind of visualize um, what you need to get done today. Right, so you can whether they don't live here. It's a virtual container, so there could be tasks in other lists you have, and then you can kind of say add these tasks to my day because I need to get them done today. And there's also suggestions based by AI uh, which tasks you can add by um, add to my day as well. But I can actually choose some other one here if I click this little button here. I can see here that's my tasks folder. When it when it comes to tasks and Microsoft To Do, the task is your kind of default container for your tasks, right? Then you can kind of create other lists as well. It's a kind of a list um, that named the tasks. And we will try to remember this because we will see this in other places as well. So it's a good thing to remember what does this really mean? It doesn't say to do, right? It just said tasks. But we, I have created here other kind of um, task list as well, as you can see. Okay, so I can actually choose, you know, my work stuff list here and I can create the task from here. But I mean, I don't usually like when I'm in Outlook, I work with mail usually. And the only reason I kind of I'm I need kind of to do this integration here is that because I want if I have a mail, it's a really good thing to kind of say I want to create a task from this mail. Right. So we're going to try to do that now. I'm going to just go back to my kind of default task list over here and search for a mail here in my inbox. Oh, I have a mail here. Um, can you please make sure to update the PowerPoint before 4 p.m. today? Sure. So what I can do here is basically just drag and drop this here, add as a task, and now a task is created over here. So it's now in to do, right? So of course I can just, I can add some more details to this if I want to over here. I can mark this as important. Of course I can add it to my day as I explained previously. Uh, I can edit it. I can even, I can also block time in my Outlook calendar for this specific uh, task if I want to. Set reminder, set due date, uh, I can move it and so forth uh, and open it to, in to do also if I want to. But I have a few options for, for these tasks here. Um, 
what I also want to do here is actually I will flag an email because I will show you how that works because many are used to kind of flagging email and that's also kind of how you worked in an, in Outlook tasks that you flag email and that will automatically create kind of this task in, uh, in Outlook tasks. So we still kind of have this functionality here, but I will flag, we have a Microsoft Weaver um, your monthly digest. So I'll actually flag this one as well. Okay, so um, what will happen now? Actually, I will go over to my desktop app, Outlook app. OK, you see here I'm logging into this exact same account. It's the same emails, no difference. So here I still have Outlook tasks. OK, this is the only kind of way to to get to Outlook tasks nowadays. So if I look down here, I have this icon. Uh, so if I click this one, I'm now in Outlook tasks. And if you can see here now, it looks rather familiar, right? We have our task default tasks folder. We have these task lists here. We, uh, you were just looking at from the Outlook on the web in the Microsoft to-do perspective, right? So the list themselves synchronize between the applications. I can actually right click here and say new folder. I mean, this is it's kind of like old stuff, right? So it's it's not really up to speed with Microsoft to do so, but I can create a list here. So that's Let's just say list from Outlook and I click OK. And you see here it shows up among my lists. I can click into this, right click and, and choose to create a new task over here. So let's create a new task. Let's say um, task from Outlook. We kind of can separate these later. Um, as I said, I mean, some stuff will be synchronized also. For example, we can set a due date for, let's say, tomorrow. We can say priority is high. Uh, we set a reminder for yeah, tomorrow, 8 a.m. Saturday, and save and close. All right, so we now created a task from Outlook Tasks, OK? Uh, and let's go back now to Microsoft To Do. And actually go, we can actually go back to Outlook on the web and click up here. And we can see now if it's been synced, hasn't already yet been synced. But what we otherwise let's let's just skip this part and let's just open Microsoft to do. So we can do that quickly just clicking here. So let's click here and now we're in the Microsoft to do web app. OK. And as you can see here, I end up in my day. And as I mentioned, this is a virtual container for kind of everything you need to get done during the day. OK, so I can, of course, add a task directly into my day. Um, they won't be stored there. When you create the task from my day directly, it's just a virtual container. It's a smart list. So they actually end up in the default container named tasks. OK, but what's really neat about this one is I can go up here under suggestions. And if I click here, uh, I get suggestions based out of uh, some different things uh, among, for example, due dates, uh, reminders, uh, certain keywords and so on. So I can very easily say, oh, yeah, I mean, oh, this is due today. I can just add them to my to my today list and then I kind of have them as a kind of a, a front screen and very easily get to check out check off these uh, when I when I've completed them. Right. Um, OK, so let's just do a brief, a brief walk through here. Um, if you just look down the, to the bottom here of my list, I can see a list from Outlook. So it's now been synchronized to Microsoft to do as well as if I go inside that list, I can see my task from Outlook as well. Right. And here you can see, I mean, when it comes to Microsoft to do, you can also add steps to your task, just like in Planner, you can add a checklist. You can do that here as well. OK, uh, I can do reoccurring tasks if I want to. And we also have categories, right? So this is something basically inherited from Outlook tasks also. If I go back here, because you, I can't create any categories in Microsoft to do, they're basically from Outlook tasks still, right? So if I go into a task here and click categorize, 
I can see these here and only from Outlook tasks, I can create new categories. So for example, here I can rename a category. I can also create a new one. And as, as you've seen here, I've already kind of re renamed a few One says optional, for example, and that will be synchronized to Microsoft to do. And I can pick it here, for example, but I would say it's not really that valuable from a Microsoft to do perspective because in Outlook tasks, as I said, it's really it's more advanced in that sense because you can group and category and filter uh, on, on categories, but you can't do that for Microsoft to do. You can see here I can sort by importance, due date, add it to my day, uh, the ones that have been added to my day alphabetically and creation date and so forth. So I can't really do much with categories here except from it's a visual thing. I can see them over here. Right, and I can add more than one category on, on a specific task. Uh, when it comes to kind of categories and what you can do instead there uh, is really when you create a task, uh, I can just say task one and you can actually use hashtags and say, you know, uh, super important or something like that, right? That was not very well spelled. This. And then I can use the search function. And if I just, I don't have any other hashtags over here. I have some hashtags. And I can see all the hashtags I have and kind of filter on these keywords in this, in that sense, okay? And here I can see my task, right? When I filter on these hashtags. So I would rather use that instead, okay? Um, just overall here, um, as I mentioned, it's based out of task lists. And I've created some over here and um, I can create a new list if I want to. And you can also see you can group lists as well. So you can create specific groups. So if you kind of want to organize your list, you can do that if you want to. In this case, I've created two groups, one work group where I have my work list, work related list, and one personal group where I have my personal related uh, list as well, shopping list, kids, school stuff, and so on. And I can create a new group here if I want to. OK, and um, if you go further up my day, I've been talking about already important is another kind of smart list. Basically, you don't there's no task actually living here. It's just a kind of uh, visualized lists that in, in here, in this case, are marked as important. You've seen that from Microsoft to do itself. You can just go over. Let's go over to this one here. You can just mark something important by clicking the little star mark task as important over here, as you can see. So if I do that, they will show up under important, okay? Microsoft Planner tasks that you have been assigned, that has been marked as important from planner perspective will show up here as well, okay? So as you can see here, for example, this is our planner, that's a planner plan and I'm a member of, and this specific tasks here have been assigned to me and has been marked important. Hence, it will show under important. If I click into this, I can see here it's there's a checklist that's been synced over as well. I can add this even if it's a planner task. I can add these to my day as well. And you can see it here. It says open in teams. OK, uh, that could also be a little bit strange because I mean, why doesn't it say open in planner? Because planner, as I mentioned in the start, so many people actually utilize planner from a team's perspective. Microsoft shows to kind of say, let's just open this task in um, the, this planner plan in teams instead, right? So this means basically this is a planner task, okay? And the same with this one. If we go down here, there's uh, a smart list called planned. And this is exactly as the important, it's a uh, all my it's all my to do tasks that have have a due date. OK, if I set a due date, they will be in here and you can see I can, they are grouped by when they are due as well as planner tasks that have been assigned to me that have a due date. They will be here as well and you can see them the same here. I think yes, this is a planner task as well. The assigned to me is the same. It's all the planner plans that have been assigned to me and all the to do tasks that have been assigned to me. Hold up, assigned to me regarding to do. Yes, I haven't talked about that, but I mentioned it in the beginning. You can share a list in Microsoft to do. And if we look here on my shopping list here, there's a little share icon over here, meaning I have shared this list. 
So if we click into this one, I can of course go in here and manage kind of my permissions for the share. And in this case, you can see I've shared this with a user called admin. <clears throat> and as soon as you share a list, you have the possibility to kind of assign people to the tasks within this shared list. So if we go in, for example, over here, I can see I had the assigned to me uh, and I can assign or assigned to, right? So now in this case, it's assigned to me. If you're going to someone else, there is that assigned to, right? So I can click this and assign this to admin and I can assign it to me, right? And in this case over here regarding this smart list assigned to me, that goes for if you shared a to-do list and assigned yourself, you will see it here, right? And of course, all the planner tasks that you have been assigned to as well will show up here. Then we have the flagged email, right? Because if you flag an email in Outlook, that will also synchronize to kind of its own uh, smart list, right? So it's actually in here. I see the flagged email. I think your monthly digest, that was the one I just flagged in Outlook, okay? And you can see here, uh, when it's when it comes from Outlook, either way, you can always kind of get a direct link to the message itself in Outlook if you want to. And of course, I can start adding, you know, information to this. I have some. I can remove this, add my own information. I can add a file in Microsoft To Do as well. Um, I can, you know, add category, repeating task, um, add due date, remind me, and so on. Or if I want to add any certain steps to this, okay. All right, so we'll talk a little bit more about the flag email and stuff like that a little bit later on, some few tips there. So this is basically the setup. It's not very complicated or anything. I just want to quickly show you the settings. If you click the cogwheel up here, uh, there is to do settings. So if I click that, I mean, I don't have to go through every one of these, but it's basically settings. You can turn off the sound when you get up on a completion. I don't recommend that. I love that sound. Um, but what I wanted to show you is that you can really hide or kind of get um, some other smart list here as well that kind of collects a certain task with some certain specific value, for example, planned or important and so. So you can remove some of these if you don't want to use them, but especially these here, the connected apps. Here you can see that the planner integration in on, is on. So if you don't really want to kind of mix in planner at all, you have the possibility. What's going on over there? Uh, you have the possibility to actually just turn this off completely if you want to, as well as with a flagged email as well, right? All right. So let's go over to planner. And as I mentioned, Planner is a great tool for group task management to easily get started with. It's very easy to set up. It's, get, it's very easy to get started with kind of like, what do we need to do today? What did we do yesterday? What did we do, do, do we have to get done until next week? Uh, who is assigned to how many tasks and, um, and so on, right? So usually I'm never in here. I just want to kind of to show you here as well, because if you go to tasks.office.com, you will get to the kind of the planner hub, right? Where you can kind of see all your planner plans you're a member of, and you can pin them. So you have them as kind of a favorites, and you can see the recent one or all ones down here that I'm a member of. You can also see this on the right, left hand side here as well. So it's, it's a kind of a, a good way to get an overview of all your planner plans in one place. Uh, you also have that assigned to me here. It's basically, as I mentioned, to do has nothing to do with this planner by its own. The only integration planner has is basically, you know, it visualizes tasks in to do, not vice versa. So this is pure planner tasks, nothing else. But this is a really good way because a lot of people are members of a lot of planners and usually they're a member of teams which has planners, right? Um, and they kind of like jump around these teams trying to figure out like where do I have these tasks assigned to me and kind of jump around these different teams and then go to the planner tab from there uh, to work with these. So with the assigned to me here, you get all the tasks you have been kind of assigned to from all the planners you are a member of. OK, and of course, I can create a new plan here if I want to. Uh, of course, that creates Microsoft 365 group as well. Um, but you, you can do you can do this or you can do it this from teams also, actually, if you want to do that. Uh, the great thing about planner is that you have a charts view, which basically means you can get 
quick information and statistics about how many tasks do we have overall in this planner plan. Uh, we can go down actually to a planner plan I have. We will come back to this later as well. Uh, here you go. Um, and you can have a chart to you saying we have six tasks left. What status are they in? How many are assigned? Uh, basically grouped on buckets. How many tasks are in each bucket? I will get to that uh, based on priority, based on um, members that have been assigned, how many tasks and so forth. You can really quickly get up to speed and say, oh, Adam here has all has five tasks assigned to him. And, you know, Emma here has one. Maybe we should kind of reassign some tasks and so on. Um, we have a schedule view as well to kind of just drag and drop tasks into this here. And I would say when we to we, if we want to utilize this, I would say use both start date and, and kind of due date because it will be replaced on this calendar view based on those dates. OK, uh, if we go back to board view over here, a planner really easily, you might be familiarized with this uh, already, but, but I would say use this kind of uh, uh, you, you build this planner based on buckets, right? And these here are called buckets, these kind of top categories over here. And I can add new buckets, name them whatever I want. I can rename them and how, however I do want to do this. And you kind of build your planner based on these kind of buckets and what, what you do with these buckets, what you name them. You can do so many things. You can have buckets based on categories. You can have buckets based on progress and so on. So it's up completely up to you how you want to kind of build this out. And then under each bucket, you create tasks, right? So you can see here, I have some tasks under each of these buckets. If I click into one of these, I can assign people to this. In this case, I'm already assigned to this. Hence, it will show up in my to-do also, right? And I, I recognize this. Um, I can, of course, change buckets here as well, or I can just drag and drop between the buckets. Um, I can have notes, due date, start time, priority, and progress. I can have a checklist here as well. I can add attachment or a URL, a link to a URL, and so forth. And we have comments as well. Uh, and this is, remember when I was talking about that, I mean, it's rather limited and not really customizable that where you can have a list instead if you need that functionality. So for example, here we have a progress. We can set the progress status here. And it's not started in progress or completed. It's not really that much. You might need more of these, right? And same with priority, urgent, important, medium, and low. You have four, and you can't add more to this, right? So this is where uh, basically it could be a good thing to have a list because when you use Microsoft list, you can kind of cre create a column called priority, and then you can just basically uh, have a choice column where you kind of add your own values and they could be 15 different priority uh, priority options or 15 different progress uh, options if you want to do that. But one thing I want to show you though, how we can kind of work around this a little bit in Planner is using labels. Because if you look here, we have 25 labels we can utilize and you can customize the names for these. As you see here, for example, I customized one here so called almost completed. So I can tag this one here saying almost completed. And when I've done that, I can, because Microsoft Planner has really great kind of grouping and filtering. So I can group now by, for example, labels. So if I have a different number of kind of these labels for progress, I can have them grouped. I can also filter. So I can say, show me all the tasks that are due this week that have a priority, then I use label, of almost completed and are assigned to me, for example, right? Then I get kind of that view only. So you can kind of use label for uh, instead, like when other things are lacking, other options in Planner are lacking, you can use that. And you can also use several labels per, per task as well. Let's just remove this filter over here. All right. Um, over here also, you can get some more, more settings for, for Microsoft Planner. You can add it to an Outlook calendar. It's just a subscription, a one-time import. I don't find that very useful. 
uh, I can copy a plan. So if I set up a template with like kind of like main default tasks and, you know, especially the kind of the bucket setup, I can copy this plan and actually rename it and actually kind of select another group where I will kind of connect this new planner to. And as I said, you kind of every plan is connected to a group in that case, right? So, and you can also choose, every, not you can't um, have attachment being co copied over, but most other things can be copied over to that new plan. All right, so uh, I just now wanted to kind of go back to, uh, not go back, we go actually to Microsoft Teams now, okay? So in Teams, of course, when we talk about Planner, I mean, I have a team here, I'm in a channel, I have created this, actually this Planner I created from here by going to the plus icon over here, uh, choose, it's still called Tasks by Planner and To-Do, click there and there I can kind of create a new plan and I can also insert an existing plan from that team. As I said, you can have several plans for every group. So I've done that and you can see this is the planner. So this is mainly, I, I work more here than from the planner app itself, web app itself, right? So I do this, I can work from here the same, kind of exactly the same way. The only thing is the backgrounds aren't supported in Teams. You can have backgrounds in a planner as well, as you can see here, it's a nice background. I don't get that in Teams. It's a little bit sad if I want to. Um, the, the other thing you can actually have now that you don't have directly from Planner is that you can work with the list view. I showed you the different views here, but now I actually have a list view as well I can work with. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the board view. Uh, but let's talk about the Tasks app in Teams. So if we go down here like this, you can now see my tasks, okay? And you kind of recognize this by now, I hope. You can see my tasks to do. So these are my task lists, as you can see here. The shopping list, I have two more lists over here, kids' school stuff. Um, I had the planned here as well. So, I mean, obviously the planner plans, the planner task also shows here just as they do in Microsoft to do. So you can see here, I can get an overview of all my planned tasks whether they are in a, in a task list in Microsoft to do my personal tasks, or if they are uh, from planner and have been assigned to me. Okay, I can see them here. And you, I can also see the source here. This is in our planner, the planner I just showed you. This as well, same assigned to me and so on. I can also go down here and see the kind of the planner plans in total in, in, in their whole, um, the, uh, the planner plans I'm a member of. So I can go here, for example, and I can get quickly get from my task app the planner plan I just showed you. And it shows me the list, you know, if I go to the board view, I can, I can access this from here. So really when you need to work on with planner tasks or whether they're assigned to you or not, you can actually access the whole plans. You see all of the tasks in this plan. You see the whole plan, basically all the tasks, even you haven't been assigned to them. Uh, up here, when it's kind of where it's Microsoft to do, as I mentioned, you only see the planner task that's been assigned to you, right? But you can work as, as a whole with both Microsoft Planner and Microsoft to do within this app, okay? I can also create a new list from here if I want to. Uh, list from Teams and Look here now, it says create in my tasks, it says my task, what's my tasks? That is Microsoft to do, it will end up in the default container of Microsoft to do. And I can also choose here to create a, a planner plan if I want to. So here are my teams I'm a member of or the groups team slash teams I'm a member of. So I can create a new planner plan in one of those teams. In this case, I just create this one over here and it will basically show up now in my my to do. And just for to make sure, I mean, it's already in my Outlook tasks because the list syncs between to do and Outlook tasks, right? So I can have, I now see it here as well, okay? All right, so you can do that if you want to. So it's, it's a really good thing, but there are two things missing. If you look really closely, uh, maybe some of you already noticed that there are two things missing here. One is my day. My day is not part of the task app in Teams. It's still missing. And I'm 
we'll try to kind of lag with Microsoft to add the My Day view here from the task uh, task app as well, right? But it's not there. So if you really like that, you have to kind of use the to do web app or the desktop app. And of course, always use it on your mobile app. And there you can access the to do uh, My Day always. Um, another thing is missing it's the flagged uh, emails. It's not here either. Why? I don't know. Uh, but that means so. If I'm at the desktop client of Outlook, I don't have the to do integration, right? Uh, so what if I want to kind of create a task from a message and still kind of work with my task from the task app in Teams? So if we go back to Outlook on the desktop, um, how do I do this? Because I, I mean, if I want to just use the to-do service, I can flag it, it will show up under flagged emails. But if we want to use the task app in Teams, and I really want to do that because I work so much else in Teams, right? So I want to kind of quickly see all my tasks I have in to-do in my Teams client as well. So what you can do here is basically don't flag anything here. Let's do, let's find another mail. Uh, let's do Cortana over here. I can take this mail, and drag it down to my task icon. And from here, I can change some settings if I want to that will be synchronized. But I, let's just do save and close. Uh, yes, like this. So what that what that do is basically if we go into tasks now, it will create a task in the default task folder right here. So you can see now it actually created a task from the desktop version in my default task folder. And if I want to, I can take this one here and drag it to any other list if I do want to do that. But if I now go back to Microsoft To Do, I can see if I go into tasks that it will be just, if I just quickly refresh this one, there you go, there it is. And as you can see, I see the mail itself, I, I can add some more information about this. So you can do this instead. So I don't work with flight emails at all. So I'm not really that concerned that it's not in the task um, app. But I mean, I know people that are really, really upset about that, actually. Um, but of course, the main reason I have flight emails here. So of course, I can see that here if I want to. But the really, the really good thing is now I can actually do this and now have this, have this uh, task visible from within the task app in Microsoft Teams, OK? Um, I just want to quickly go over to OneNote. I haven't showed that. Uh, let's see, where's my OneNote? Where's my OneNote? There you go. So uh, here's my OneNote. It's the OneNote 2016. It's uh, I, have a, I have a notebook over here. Uh, I don't have to do explain that in detail, but here are my notes. I can add whatever notes I want to. And let's say here I have a note here saying, remember to do my session at Microsoft 365 Chicago. It's a little late about that now, but let's make this a task. So I can just put my put my mouse over here and then go up to Outlook tasks up here, right? So if I click this one, I can set, I mean, due date today or custom or next week. Let's just do today, boom. And there will be a flag, okay? That means now, if we go back to Outlook, go into here again, let's just reset this one, and look under Tasks, there it is. Remember to do my session at Microsoft 365 Chicago. It's a task. And since also it synchronizes many, many other ways, if you go back to Microsoft To Do, it should be in my task app. There you go as well, and as well in my tasks in Teams see here let's there you go there it is okay so you can use that if you utilize uh, OneNote 2016 you can kind of incorporate that and it's really neat sometimes when you actually um have a lot of notes in a meeting for example and there are follow-ups and so forth and i will also say like a little bit of hint there will be a lot of things happening with OneNote online and OneNote for the windows 10 app uh, regarding uh, um tasks and kind of meeting tasks and so forth coming forward. So keep an eye open for that. But as of now, this is kind of the way we have to go about. All right. Um, 
Also, quickly, before uh, kind of finishing off here, I just want to quickly show you how you can also create a task from a chat in Teams or any kind of channel conversation or anything like that. It doesn't matter. Let's go to a team. Let's go to the post post uh, post tab over here and I have an important um, conversation going on over here. There's a post here and I want to kind of make this a task so I don't forget about it. I can press on the channel options or, or sorry, post options over here. I press the ellipsis, the three dots. I can go down to the bottom under more actions and there I have create task. So I click that one and now I can create a to do task. And you see here tasks, that's your default task folder in Microsoft To Do. And you also get an option to choose all your other lists in Microsoft To Do if I want to do that. So I can just do like work stuff here, for example, or I can create a planner task if I want to do that. So I have my planner plan over here and I can add it as a task to that plan. And when I do that, I can say what buckets do I want it to be created in and so forth, due date, progress, and so forth. Let's just create this in tasks, medium priority or important, the due date, tomorrow. I have a link to I always get a link to the message itself in Teams in the task message kind of task notes. I can remove that if I want to. I can change this however I like or add information here if I want to and click add task. All right. So that was it for kind of for this demo. So I'll quickly go back to my presentation here and see here this way like that. And um, thank you so much for attending this session. I hope you learned a little bit more, even if you kind of knew many of these services that you kind of learned some trick tips and tricks or anything like that. Uh, but thank you so much for attending. <laughs> Uh, please fill out this kind of speaker survey for uh, this session. And of course, every session you attend during this event, you should do that as well for the overall conference as well. And uh, I talk, I mentioned it at the beginning also, there are some raffle and giveaways. So for example, if you Twitter about this event, use the hashtag uh, M365 sheet 22, and you have a chance to win a Chicago prize pack as well. And also please visit the sponsor if you opted in to talk to, to the partners for this event during registration and so forth, you can do that. And then actually you can have a, uh, have a chance to win uh, some nice prizes as well. And there's a link in the form you can fill in with some answers that will be given during each of these sponsor sessions. And I will actually post this link for you uh, just after I, I quit sharing here. So with that, thank you so much for attending my session and have a great rest of the day and I hope you have a great time.